Troops of 25 Brigade Operation Hadin Kai have killed some fighters of the Islamic State in West African province, Eswap, including Modu Tavjid, a bomb maker in Kumala village along the Medugri Dambua Road, Bonu State. According to reports, Eswap fighters ambushed the troops who, alongside the civilian joint task force, repel the incident. To discuss the fight against terrorism in the Northeast, the theater commander, Operation Hadin Kai, Major General Chris Musa, joins us live from our studio in Bronu State. A pleasure having you with us on the program. Thank you very much. Now, what is your assessment of the fight so far? Um, Thank you again. Um, the assessment from the Northeast is pretty good. Uh, we're happy about how things are improving. And um, together with other security agencies, we are working very hard to ensure that we improve on a daily basis to ensure that there's total peace in the Northeast. The challenges of prosecuting a war such as this from a theater commander's point of view? Uh, sorry, please go take, take that again. I just wanted you to walk us through, you know, the challenges and the hurdles in prosecuting such a war from a theater commander's point of view. Yeah, th thank you very much. The challenges are multifaceted. Um, uh, like you know, we uh, our, our approach is through the kinetic and the non-kinetic aspects. And what we say is that the kinetic aspects is only about 25% of the whole solution. 75% has to do with um, good governance, humanitarian assistance, provision of uh, basic amenities required. Um, on our own part, we remain focused. We continue to ensure that we degrade the capabilities of the terrorists to such an extent that they cannot pose any um, any threat to anywhere. Um, the, like for now, we have the rainy season. Um, the entire theater, the entire theater is, uh, is highly flooded. So we have challenges of moving with our heavy equipment. So we have to move light. Um, the air component also because of the weather, sometimes you won't be able to fight. And then the, the difficulties with uh, asymmetric warfare, because it has to do with ideology, uh, which is inborn to human beings. And so you cannot just see somebody and identify who is who, and that makes it very difficult. In conventional setting, we know who the enemy is. But in insurgency, you don't know your enemy. That, when you think somebody is your friend, that might be your worst enemy. And so it makes it, and then we don't have a frontage. Everywhere is an area of theater because any attack will come from any direction. But we're happy uh, with the cooperation of other security agencies. We're doing pretty good. Um, General, so uh, we're sure if we continue the momentum, there will be, um, there will be peace all through. Okay, Major General Musa, how much of sabotage have you seen that has limited the success on the war against insurgency? Yeah, it's so much. Um, as it is, we still have uh, those that still uh, provide support, logistic support to the insurgents, those that trade with them. Uh, we have individuals that will drive in their vehicles across to the filling station and then take it to the area and the siphon and sell to them. There are those that go to markets, buy food stuff, take it to them and go and... Uh, so it makes it a lot difficult because it's happening everywhere. Uh, in the Northeast, we have... Um, we banned the movement of um, movement of urea fertilizer into the northeast, but you keep on finding individuals sneaking. Uh, just not too long ago, around Damatru, we arrested a truck of over, over 100 bags of urea, well covered, you know, and in the truck. So you still see individuals because of the peculiar gains that they get. They still go to assist, and that is what is really driving this. And then we have uh, the support they get from ISIS, the foreign funding and um, foreign support they're getting. So these are areas that make it a lot, a lot difficult. Well, we talked about the challenges. Yeah, but we're happy that we're getting the support of the locals here. Okay. So we've talked about the challenges and the sabotage. Now let's look at the successes. How much of this have we recorded, especially since the launch of Operation Hadinkai? Yeah, it's been well. Uh, since last year, July, we started the, those that have started surrendering, 
We have so far over 75,000 that have surrendered. Out of this number, 15,000 are males. Um, over 35,000 are children. And the rest are women. And what we realize is that the terrorists, we are now trying to... Um, a new generation of terrorists. And that's why you see this high number of children, 30, over 35,000. So what they do, and, and that's where they keep on abducting women. They abduct women and then they subject them to so much in, in human treatment. Um, and once a woman takes in and delivers, in four months' time, she takes in again. So they make sure they are trying to replicate and reproduce new, new generation of terrorists, which is most dangerous because we know human nature is where a kid grows, whatever he sees, he believes that's a, that's a natural thing within the area. So we're happy that they're out and we'll continue to encourage those of them in um, to surrender. Uh, just recently, we have been able to uh, rescue about four, uh, five Chibok girls and some other women that were abducted that we didn't even know until when we, our troops went in, we were able to see them. Uh, the conduct of our operation, Operation Desert Sanity, is, uh, is working very well because we have been able to dislodge them from all their enclaves, their camps, where before now used to be very difficult to enter. Uh, so it gives the opportunity for other people to, to escape and come out. Uh, oh. What we said is that the, 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 what we have realized is that the leadership, the leadership of ISWAP and the Jazz are just doing brisk business. They are trying to make money by abducting individuals, collecting money and ransom, and then the fundings they are getting from outside. And that's what's projecting it. Uh, so we're doing everything possible to deny them those abilities. Now, how much collaboration is the military having with local communities, especially in terms of intelligence gathering? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think we're getting the best we can. The, the locals have seen the sincerity of Operation Hat Inkai. And uh, they're giving us the best information. And we're getting it as at when, when due, um, through a great risk of to their own lives, too. Uh, we're really very grateful for what they're doing, and uh, we try to encourage them to do more. Uh, I think uh, from what they have seen, how we operate now, they, they don't hesitate to give us information. And that has greatly assisted us. And then together with the civilian JTF, the hunters, and the vigilantes, we are working in synergy. The Nigerian police, of course, has really done very, very well. Uh, the Nigerian Air Force, the Navy, everybody is putting in his best, and we're working together as family. So briefly now, can you tell us, is Nigeria really winning the war against insurgency, especially in the Northeast? Yes, I'm always a very positive person, and I believe we're winning the war. In the Northeast especially, it is, it is, it is a lot, lot better. And, um, you know, because of the pressure we put them in here, somehow they fizzled out into the North Central and the Northwest. But now the, 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 the armed forces have been able to reorganize the areas, both the North Central and the Northwest is also adequately receiving the best attention. Now we have the best commanders in the, the GOC-1 div, the GOC-8 div uh, doing very well. And now we have gone ahead so that if the, to, prevent, to, to ensure that when the pressure is high on them in the North Central and Northeast, they don't move to the South. Major General Chris Musa, Theater Commander, Operation Hadinkai in the Northeast. A pleasure sharing your thoughts with us on the program. Thank you. Thank you very much.